It's time now to wrap up our six part series on mammograms. We've gone through every step of the process from making an appointment to actually getting a mammogram to getting the results and also talking with the doctors. I've gone through the whole entire process with you and now it's time to answer your final questions with Dr. Denise Reddy from Scottsdale Medical Imaging. Thanks again for coming on. Thank you for having me. All right, let's talk about the final questions that viewers have because we kind of have gone through this whole process, but a lot of people still have questions and submitted them to us. Um, here's the first one. This person said, I've read online that mammograms lead to overdiagnosis and false positives. What does that mean? So overdiagnosis refers to the finding of tiny cancers that might not cause any symptoms or threaten a woman's life. And we've made a lot of advances in the past decade in cancer detection, but we still can't tell which cancers are life-threatening and require treatment, and which cancers are non-threatening and don't need treatment. So at this point, we have to treat all cancers. Now, overdiagnosis is different than a false positive. So a false positive occurs when a radiologist looks at the mammogram and sees an abnormality and asks the patient to come back for additional images. And then those additional images show that the area is harmless and nothing to worry about. But so that's can, okay. That's absolutely that's okay. Right. It just leads to some anxiety. Okay, definitely. Let's talk to about the differences between the types of mammograms. Um, our next viewer wrote in that they say, I'm not sure I understand the difference between a screening mammogram and a diagnostic mammogram. Okay, so a screening mammogram is like the mammogram you had, Dustry. Mm -hmm. So it's for women who don't have any symptoms or signs of breast cancer, and we do two views of each breast. A diagnostic mammogram is also an x-ray of the breast, but we might do some special views or additional pictures. And we do diagnostic mammograms in women who have a sign of breast cancer, like a breast lump, or maybe they have some discharge. Okay, now this is actually um, goes with that diagnostic mammogram. Our next viewer said, I was called back for a diagnostic mammogram last time. Everything turned out fine, but does this mean I'm now at a higher risk for breast cancer? This is a good question. It is, and no, it does not mean you're at a higher risk for breast cancer. About 10% of women will be called back for additional imaging, and for the majority of women, we'll find that there's no abnormality there, and they can just return to routine screening without any worries. All right, this is really good news from um, somebody who was watching our segments and she wrote, after watching Destry get her mammogram, she's convinced me to get my first mammogram. So I'm really excited, go do that. But she wants to know, do I need a doctor's order? So at SMILE, we do like for you to have a doctor's order. And the reason we want that is if you need any follow-up, we wanna make sure you have a clinician that you can do that with. Um, if you absolutely can't get an order, there are some facilities that do accept self-referral and you'll need to schedule there. All right, so take care of that. You definitely want to do it. Um, our final question today is, my mother had breast cancer and didn't know until it spread to other organs. What can I do to catch it early? So firstly, I'm very sorry to hear about your mother. Um, let's talk first about what all women need to do. Women beginning at the age of 20 need to do a monthly self-exam. Um, women need to get clinical breast exams by a clinician every three years between the ages of 20 and 40, and then every year once they turn 40. And then the American Cancer Society recommends that all women get a mammogram every year beginning at the age of 40. Now for some women who have a family history like our, our caller did, they may need to start their screening earlier. And how we decide what age they should start screening at is if you take the age that your loved one was diagnosed with breast cancer at, we go start 10 years earlier. So if your mother got diagnosed with cancer at 40, you need to start getting your screening mammogram at 30. Right. So it's really important for all women to talk to their doctor, get a good understanding of what their own personal risk uh, is for breast cancer so that their screening plan can be individualized. Yeah, absolutely. And, and thank you so much for taking us through this six part journey and kind of showing you how it all worked. Do you have any final thoughts for women watching out there today? So I know for a lot of women, they're so busy taking care of everyone else in their lives that they kind of put their own health to the side. And they really need to make sure that they take care of themselves, get their mammogram every year, and talk to their doctor about what their own risk of breast cancer is so that they can understand it and individualize their treatment plan. All right. Well, thanks again. We appreciate it. Again, everyone, for any information about anything we talked about, or you can schedule your mammogram online, it's very simple. Just go to the website, esmile.com. That's E-S. M-I-L dot com.